I guess um, moving into uh, Longmuir Shield, um, there were some results that really uh, have uh, changed the face of the of the of the finals situation at the moment. Um, I guess uh, I guess uh, I guess firstly uh, East Sandringham, who are well on top. Um, they've only lost the one game. Uh, they're on 48 points after nine rounds. They made seven for 265 with uh, Anton Day again making uh, runs. He made 99. Um, on top of that, uh, a few 30s from a few blokes, uh, but Bentley Uniting in reply uh, all out for 220. And I think from memory they were 9 for 170 when the number 11 came in to uh, bat with Damien Britt, who was uh, making a lot of runs. And they were getting there, they were getting there until uh, Britt was on 99. And um, now I know there was a run out this last weekend. Now I don't know whether it was <laughs> Britt's 100th run or not. <coughs> Mm. But the number 11 uh, got run out and uh, left Damien Britt stranded on 99. So, um, yeah, if that was for Damien's 100th run, well, East Hamingham are a very ruthless club if that's the case. So, um, yeah, bad luck uh, to, to Britty, but well batted. Well, I'm sure he's good enough, he'll make another one. So. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this game in particular has really opened up the, uh, the final situation where Amiga, who were reasonably confident after making 190, 191 runs, um, again, Clint Ferguson making 48, and uh, Tristan Ream is making not, uh, 60. Steve McConkey doing the best with the ball, as always, three for 63. And um, him, along with uh, Donny Taranto, did it with the bat. They passed uh, Omega one wicket down. Um, so Taranto, 89 not out, and McConkey, 88 not out. Now, with that, that slips Omega from, I think, third spot to fifth. Mm -hmm. They're equal on 36 points with uh, three other clubs. Um, but yeah, um, that game in particular dented their percentage quite heavily and that's why they're actually out of the four now. Forgetting about Amiga though, she saw Paige, they're really starting to... One three in a row, I believe. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so. it, it always helps when you see your guys, you know, perform, make runs and, um, you know, McConkie's probably, you know, from what I've seen, he's probably been the best bet I've seen this year, but, um, you know, he's having a fantastic year in Toronto. He can, he goes all right as well, so yes. um, if they can develop the bottom you know, part of their, their 11, they, yeah. they could start, uh, you know, pushing for, you know, finals next year. You know? They've snuck up to eighth on the ladder now, uh, obviously the last uh, couple of wins, um, on 24 points. And as you say, they, they, they just need to build some depth in their, in their first 11 and, um, yeah, they're definitely on the right track, which is good for them. Um, so who, who have Amiga had the last two rounds, do you know? Uh, I'm not too sure, but I can uh, get to that in a minute. Um, I think um, Brighton Union might be one of them. No, they've got LePage Carnegie South. Oh, okay. So anyway, okay. All right, we'll, we'll work that out very shortly. But um, Elwood had a big, big win against uh, Kingston Heath. Uh, they made nine for three fifty one. Elwood um, with Marshall making one hundred and thirteen and Nathan Harris ninety two. They opened the batting together, so I think the opening partnership was. I heard that Marshall had one hundred up to fourteen. Yes, yes, that's right. So it could have been a massive day for Marshall at his stadium. Um, but yeah, 9 for 3.51, kicks and heath, to their credit, you know, a good batting effort to uh, make 2.11, but clearly when you're chasing 3.50, uh, it's, mm. it's, uh, it's a bit hard. Um, um, Warner for kicks and heath making 96, so that's a, a name to look out for, for, for the heath. Um, we talked about uniting and, uh, sorry, Union and A&A. &A. Um, West Bentley and Washington Park had a one-day game on uh, Saturday because there was uh, sprinklers going nuts at... Uh, at uh, Victory Park. Um, they batted uh, second, chasing Washington Park 7 for 157. Chris Gorey made 40. Um, and uh, Carl Reid took three wickets. And um, I think they were 8 for 130 or something like that, chasing the 157. So they were, they were in a bit of trouble, um, West Bentley. And you would have almost thought that Washington Park would have picked up their second win for the year. But uh, they got over the line. Again, Jack McLeod, who's, um, who's made a few runs over the last few rounds, uh, batting in the lower order, and he made 56, so uh, well done to Jack. Um, got uh, West Bentley over the line, and um, that, that keeps him in the four, which is, um, which is a good result for uh, West Bentley, obviously, because um, uh, with Elwood and um, Omega in fifth and sixth place, mm. uh, both on 36 points, along with West Bentley and Union, um, it definitely makes it feel like you were sweating around. on this because obviously we prayed for right. They, they were hoping yeah, yeah. for West Bentley to, uh, to lose mm -hmm. because that means that uh, it puts less competition for them for a final spot. But uh, yeah, they'll be disappointed. Yeah, they were. But um, look, West Bentley picking up the wins, but um, 
you probably their, their form's probably not as good as what they'd hope this time of year. Um, they, know, just, just, they just have never really clicked as a team <coughs> and had that you know that perfect perfect game where they make a lot of runs and mm. you know the, the big names contribute. And again, I pointed out before, but they've got players who come in and come out mm. consistently. Yeah, like, I think the the Reed, the fast bowler Reed, he played and in Reed, this game. Yeah, um, Tim that, Moore, all these sort of guys, Jack McLeod's in and out, and all this sort of stuff. So that doesn't help. But um, not to mention, Con hasn't really had that great a season either. Well, this is the thing, like. Uh, <laughs> Me looking outside in and having good results and, and knowing what West Bentley's like, you know, if Con was at West Bentley this year, I still think they'd be winning games of cricket if he wasn't. Mm. I think they'd still be winning these games. But um, and I think that's a good thing because there's room for improvement from Con. Um, because if Con starts batting like we know he can, coming into finals, then um, you know it's you know all of a sudden they're going to have a very very uh, you know big run at the finals. But um, yeah, I guess with Con, um, yeah, he probably hasn't had the season he, he liked, and I don't know if that's pressure from um, coming from Brighton and, and having the the, the the tag of obviously being paid a, a substantial sum of money. I don't know if that's played into it, or it's just um, that um, playing in a new team. I don't know, but um, it's uh, a lot of pressure. He's played eight games and he's only made 180 runs, so um, at an average of just over 23. So. Uh, and if you take that 60 that he uh, scored against uh, his old club at uh, Union... That's well, I know he made a, he's made a 60 and a 50, I think, so... Two well, hits. If that's, yeah, well, if that's the case, he's made 60 runs out of six games, so... But you, you, look, at the end of the day, you, you're not night player, whatever it's called, in the year, well, twice and, in a row. And, and if, you know, he's due, so let's just see whether he um, gets on and makes... Uh, runs at uh, the, the important time of the year, which uh, you, you can't discount. He's one of those blokes who could do that, so absolutely. In the final game, Mackey, who have cemented second spot just about. Um, oh, depends how it goes next game and, and the game after that. But uh, Mackey made 8 for 2.45. No one really starring except the Clark, who top scored for 41. Um, they rolled Carnegie South for 155. Um, Cole Kinsella taking 6 for 41. And Craig Park again, uh, 3 for 33. Craig Park's taken almost 30 wickets uh, after nine rounds this year. He's probably bowled about 1,000 overs though, isn't he? I would say so, yeah. I don't think um, uh, anyone would have bowled as many overs as Craig. Um, but yeah, so uh, Mackey uh, are on 7 and 2 after, mm. after nine rounds. And that's a, that's a great result for them at this stage. They didn't have um, Damien Crotterfield play this game. Um, so, so again, that's probably a good test for them when it comes to uh, just getting their depth out and just being confident about um, how, uh, I guess, how their game can be played uh, without having to rely, rely on it. Well, it gives someone else a chance, doesn't it, to bat in the top three. So, um, that, that's why, obviously, for them, to, well, they made two forty something like that. Two forty five. They've had a good game. That's had right. Had a good game, but um, yeah. so yeah, that's um, that's how the uh, long new season round has, has has pulled up at this stage. Um, now I'll, I will just uh, just uh, work out to find out what the uh, next round's games are. Um, as uh, mentioned, we've got Mackie this game, so uh, that'll be a big test for our boys. It's at Mackie, so it's on the uh, the Oasis, <coughs> uh, the nice lush ground that they have there without requiring much water. Um, Someone said their pitch is very it's similar to West Bend. There's a lot of bounce. Remember, like I think I think it might be the case. Be yeah, funny like that. Yeah, which would be. I think that's going to be good for our bowlers. Yeah. Now predicting the uh, the next round, uh, Amiga come up against Elwood, Ooh. which is a huge we're game. Whoever loses, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. absolutely, that's yeah. right. So uh, this is the ultimate twelve point game if you could ever call one. Where's that at Bricker? That's being played at Bricker Reserve. So um, yeah, that's going to be a uh, that's going to be an amazing match. I think uh, a lot of people will be uh, wanting to see how that one goes. I'll back Elwood in that one. I think. Uh I think Marshall. I think Marshall will have a big say in that game. I reckon Old will will get the points there, and uh, Amiga will be all over. Yeah, yeah. Look, I uh, have a feeling too. So um, you would have thought that um, last week would have really dented uh, their confidence. Having said that, though, Amiga they did lose Whiten uh, during the week. He had a leg injury of some sort. Crazy man, or something. Like something like that. Some UFC stuff going on there. Um, and the other one was apparently um, Clemo couldn't bowl either for some reason. He was yeah, injured. but that's that's a test of a good side is their depth. So if, you know. Maybe maybe Steve Cruz comes back up after taking all these. I've never seen him play, so I don't know. But uh, look, 